we are continuing our study of the prophet of the Bible, looking into the ministry of one in a million prophet, a woman prophet, a prophetess, Deborah. Deborah was a wife, a woman of God, and the head in the public service, an uncommon feat in that ancient world. She was a judge, a national leader. I believe Paul had a kind in mind when he exempted mothers, spiritual mothers, mothers in Israel from the restrictions on women in church leadership. 1 Timothy chapter 2 verse 15 Notwithstanding, she shall be saved in childbearing. Women should not lead men by the Apostle Paul's doctrine in 1 Timothy chapter 2 verses 11 to 14. Women, but not mothers in Israel. A mother leads her children, her spiritual children. A woman that has attained this state of maturity, spiritual motherhood, is exempted from these restrictions. 1 Timothy chapter 2 verse 15, she shall be saved in childbearing if they continue in faith, charity, and holiness with sobriety. Prophetess Deborah, the wife of Lapidot, a mother in Israel, sat amongst men at the gate at the head of the judges, charting the cause for her nation. I described biblical roles of prophets from the start of this series as being a revivalist, social political activist, and deliverance minister. We are seeing Deborah in today's teaching performing these roles. As I said, God sent prophets to his people then the Israelite, but now the church, spiritual Israel to revive her from spiritual laxity and deliver her from the physical evil government having its roots in the spiritual realm. God's prophet is sent to the church for revival as the evangelist is sent into the world for soul winning crusades. Both engage the power gift, but on different fields of operation. A biblical prophet is not indifferent to societal ills, oppression, and suffering of God's people, just as the evangelist is not true to the bleeding world. A prophetic anointing is provoked in response to the oppressions of the evil governments, the spiritual wickedness ruling over the destiny of individuals, families, communities, or nations. Prophet Deborah was a social political activist, deliverance minister, and a revivalist. Judges chapter 5, verse 8. They chose new gods, then was war in the gates. Was there a shield of spear seen among 40,000 in Israel? The enemy knows the only way to keep them enslaved is to substitute the living God they serve for the God of silver and gold, of self, of materialism, of money. To divide them. Judges chapter 5, verse 15. For the divisions of Reuben, there was a great thought of the heart. Gilead, Dan, and Asher stay off on the day of the battle. For the division of Reuben, there was a great searching of the heart. God's prophet Deborah revived and united them. Deborah charged and changed the social political terrain in Israel by her prophecy. She awoke the sleeping giants, the people of God and their governors. General Barak couldn't move a hoof but by her prophetic utterances. Until the prophetic rises to the occasion, the situation remains the same. The highways were not safe, villages were raided, kidnappers and bandits had a field day, inflation and abject poverty confusion and misery until that I arose, that I arose a mother in Israel. Judges chapter 5 verse 7 to 8 Until God's prophet arises, the evil government of Jabin the king of the Canaanites and his chief of the Yami staff, Sisera, is not toppled. Now, where are the Deborah this nation daily needs? Where are the Elijahs, where are the Samuels to the tame of the ranging Philistine? Where are the Moses and Aaron? Where are God's prophets? The church of Christ in this nation needs biblical prophets. Until the prophet wake as did Deborah, the church will continue as slumber and this nation will sink. Next episode on the time of relief, we shall be studying the prophetic ministry of Elijah, another one in a million prophets. 
Until then, on the time of relief, the time of revelation, the time of liberation, the time of empowerment and favor remains blessed.